I love this box. I know you love that box, but um, we're recording. No one ever put tickets in this box. Why? Even though there's a lot. It will be possessed and we're doomed. Okay, you have a there. Hello, KP Newscast. I'm Kaylee. And I'm Evelyn. So for today's newscast, we have Student of the Month with Jasmine, Fun Facts with Elena, Hot Topic with Kaylee and me, Teacher's Corner, I mean the Real Talk with me, Teacher's Corner with Charlene, The Quiz with Kevin, and, and bloopers. bloopers! Let's get on with the first clip with Student, Student of the, the Month, Month with Jasmine. Jasmine. <laughs> Good morning, KFC News. I'm Jasmine Sapoboda, and I'm doing Student of the Month, and I have a very special guest, and the special guest is Lily. Hey, KFC News. So let's go to the first question. Is this your first time receiving the award for Student of the Month? Um, no, I've had it a couple of years. Cool. What do you like most about your teacher? Um, the thing I most like about Ms. Hooten is that she's like really nice. What's your favorite subject? My in favorite school? subject um, is science. Are you in any activities such as sports, church, school, or um, ETC or student council? I am in student council and sports. What advice do you have for other students who want to become student of the month? Um, the advice I I'm going to give to you guys is to be kind and to believe that you're going to be it if you want to be it. What do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be um, a, vet, a vet like my mom, like a veterinarian. <laughs> that's, that's Student of the Month with Lily. Back to you in the studio. That was it. What? The box is gone. Who touched it? Who touched I don't have it. Neither do you. I never saw you touch it. <laughs> Where did it go? Um. Oh, who wait. knows? No, but Evelyn, remember, anyone touches it or puts tickets in it, we're doomed. <laughs> Let's just get on with the next clip with Fun Fact with Elena. Let's, Let's go. go. Oh, no. <laughs> Okay, so let me see. I'm gonna do this first, then I do that. Oh, oh, are you recording? Oh, okay. Hi, everybody. I'm Elena. I'll do fun facts. So let's get to the clip. Fact one: Did you know that some dogs like jumping on trampolines? Fact two: Did you know that snakes use their tongue to smell? Fact three. Did you know that a coyote can hear a mouse moving under one foot of snow? Fact four. Did you know that giraffes sleep a little less than two hours a day? Fact five. Did you know that Lucky Charms was the first cereal that had marshmallows? Fact six. Did you know that elephants can travel up to 90 miles a day? Fact seven. Did you know that it takes only three days to fly to the earth from to fly to the moon from Earth. Fact eight. Did you know that the Olympic gold medals are actually more than 90% silver? Fact nine. Did you know that the rainbow moves while you move? Fact 10. Did you know that in some cultures, it's, luck, it's good luck for a bird to poop on you? That <laughs> All right, you guys, well, that was me with fun facts. I hope you liked it. Now back to you guys in the studio. Evelyn, guess what? What? Those were some fun, fun facts. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, there were some pretty fun, <laughs> fun, 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 fun facts. Fun facts. Let's get on to the last hot topic I'll ever be in. It's okay. Cry, cry. A silent tear. Someone. Yeah, Don't you dare. Yeah, I won't, I won't. <laughs> so, let's go. With what? With hot topic, with you and me. Let's go! Okay. 
Oh my goodness, really fast typers. Today, Evelyn and I are here with Marco and the keyboarding class. Well, let's see what they're going to do. Let's go watch the clip. Oh, hi, KFE Newscast. I'm Kaylee. So, and for today's newscast, I'm going to interview Marco. Hello, everyone. So, I want to be asking him just a few questions. So, let's get on with the first. Why did you create a keyboarding class? Okay, well, you know, in general, learning how to type is very important. But there's two main reasons why I started this class. Reason number one is because of this device. This has taken over this. This is slowly disappearing. This technology is the future, and it's now every classroom has Chromebooks, and every student is using a Chromebook, right? Mm -hmm. But Kaylee, when I walk into a classroom, this is what I see, especially in sixth grade. I see students doing this. They're pecking at the keyboard. This is not typing. This is a bad, bad habit. Every student should be typing like this. This is the correct way. And if you can learn how to type like this, this will benefit you, and that is a fact. Reason number two, every student here at Kermit Floyd should learn how to type now before they start middle school. Because if you think about it, once you start middle school, they're going to give you assignments right away. And if you don't know how to type, that's a disadvantage. Why not learn it now instead of taking a class at middle school? We have this keyboarding class. Take it now, learn it. So when you start middle school on your first day, you're prepared, you're ready. That's why. Question number two. What do your students do during your keyboarding class? So our class, it's all about muscle memory. So when my students come into the class, they first get a free snack. That way they're not hungry during the class session. After the snack, we meet in here in the computer lab. Each student has their own account to sign into the typing program. Once they sign in, they are going to constantly type nonstop for one hour. And the reason for that is they are developing muscle memory, meaning they are constantly typing, okay, nonstop. And they're going to get to a point where they don't have to memorize the letter or the key up here. Everything's be being memorized with the fingers. That's muscle memory. So it's not actually the program that's teaching you. It's you. It's the muscle memory. And that's all you do. There's no homework, no assignments. You just you come in, sign in, practice typing nonstop for one hour. So is it true that you have a kid in your class that's really fast at typing? Mm -hmm. We have a fourth grader, Matthew, from Miss Q's class. This dude can type fast. I mean, faster than a teacher. He can even type numbers without looking. I can't even type numbers. I just know my letters, not, not my numbers. So it's possible to learn how to type. If a fourth grader can do it, a fifth and a sixth grader can learn how to type. What program are you guys using for your typing? So the program <coughs> that we are using is called Typing Club. Mm -hmm. It's a really, really good program. Um, there's about 200 lessons. And every student starts at lesson number one, and they have to work their, their way up. And each lesson, you're graded by uh, five stars. Uh, students have to pass with at least three stars. If they only get one or two stars, they have to repeat the lesson before they advance. But it's a really, really good program. How do your students sign up for your class? Easy. Just come and find me, get a permission slip, take it home, have your parents sign it, bring it back, and you're in. Start showing up to the class. Is this the computer lab mm -hmm. you guys This use? is where they come in and they sign in because the screens are huge, mm -hmm. big keyboards. It's just easier than using a, a Chromebook. But you can still learn on a Chromebook. It doesn't matter what you use. As long as you're here and you're committed, you will learn how to type. Well, what time and when is your typing class? So this year, our keyboarding class is every Monday and Thursday after school, and it ends at 4 o'clock. So you're in here about an hour each time we meet. So it's Monday, Thursday after school. Okay. When, how and when, how old were you and when did you learn to type? I learned to type when I was in middle school because in, when I was in elementary school there was no such thing as a typing class. Many elementary schools didn't teach typing back then. And what's crazy is even today it hasn't changed. There's still a lot of elementary schools that do not teach typing. That has to change, Kaylee, because Students are not using these, right? Mm -hmm. They're not using it properly. 
They're okay. pecking at the keyboard. That is not the right way to type. You gotta type the correct way. So it's important that we have this class and students learn how to type now. Are we the only, is Kermit Floyd the only school that has a typing class? We are currently the only elementary school in the whole district that has a keyboarding class. So everyone should take advantage of this class. It's free. Come and sign up. Learn how to type. Next year, are you going to continue this keyboarding class? Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be here next year because there's a rumor that the district might move me somewhere, somewhere else. I, I hope I'm going to be here next year. And if I am, I'm going to continue with the keyboarding class. I'm going to continue with everything that we do with Tech Shop, including the newscast. So hopefully, I will be here next year. What, what school are you supposed to go to if the rumor is true? Um, the rumor is that they're going to move all site techs to a central location and they're going to rotate us each week. That's the plan. I'm not sure if it's going to happen next year, but that's the plan the district has. I hope not. Mm, me either. What advice do you have for your students in your typing class? So any student that signs up for the keyboarding class, I always tell them this. When you sign up, do not quit, do not give up. Because learning how to keyboard is not the funnest thing to do. You have to be committed. You have to come in week after week, practice nonstop for that one hour. And if you continue, you come week after week, you will learn how to type and it will get easier and easier. Is there anything else you want to add to this interview, Marco? Yes. Any parents out there that's watching this clip, our keyboarding class, everything that we do with Tech Shop, Newscast, it's 100% free. Your child does not have to pay for anything. All they have to do is sign up and show up. And that's it. And Kaylee, mm -hmm. Evelyn, you guys are doing an amazing job with the Newscast, and I appreciate you for the interview. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So, well, that was my interview with Marco. Hey, KFA Newscast. I'm here with Matthew and Alexis. And I'm going to be asking them a couple of questions for Hot Topic. First question is, why did you decide to sign up for keyboarding class? Uh, I, I decided to um, sign up because when I was a little kid, we had a laptop. And then I wanted to know how to type. And it was from third grade. And then now, um... I told my mom if, I, if she could teach me how to type, and she didn't know. So when I went to first, fourth grade, I just realized that Marco was hounding out papers, and then I told Marco, what are you doing? And then he's saying that he's um, giving up for a typing class. So that's when I wanted to um, sign up for a typing class. I wanted to sign up for typing class because when I heard that he was giving out papers for typing class, I wanted to learn how to type faster because I would usually type slow and I'd be behind. Second question, did you have any typing skills before you started keyboarding class? Um, no, I used to look at the keyboard and type with just only one finger, not with two. Um, I had no skills, but I did know how to spell, so, so I, sp I know how to spell words, but I did not know how to how to type fast. Okay, question number three. What exactly do you do in keyboarding class? In keyboarding class, we go on a website called Keyboarding 101. If you go on that, there's two, there's two versions of it. You can, you can um, go on Typing Jungle, which means it has a couple mini games, or you could go on just regular typing where, where you can type a bunch, or you can type. Is it, le is it hard to learn how to type? Well, I think yes, because it took me two and a half months to type really, like, kind of fast. I think it is hard to type fast because I, I was here since the first day of typing class, and it's still hard for, to type fast. How do you like the keyboarding class so far? Are you going to continue taking the class next year to improve your typing skills? Uh, I think yes, because mostly... Um, my sister is in college, and then she says that you have to type a lot. So, so maybe next year. So if I get in, if I go in college, I could type more faster than other people. I like the typing the typing class so far, and yes, I I am going to sign up next year. Can you demonstrate on this here beautiful keyboard? Okay. How you typed before and how you type now? Um. I used to type like this, always 
always looking at the keyboard, but now I don't look at the keyboard. I just type what what um, the words are supposed to type what, in whatever what I'm doing. You're in fourth grade, and you can type faster than most students in middle school and high school. How does that make you feel? Uh, that feel me. That feels good for me because it feels like I'm faster than high school and middle school. Um, that makes me feel good because now I know when I go to middle school and high school, I'll have an advantage on some people. How many words per minute can you type right now? Uh, I guess 35. What is your current goal? Uh, 46. Uh, How about you? I, I usually get up to 17 words per minute and my goal is 25. Has learning how to type helped you in the classroom? Mm, yeah. Yeah. How about you? Um, yes, because we, we have an essay about animals, and it's helping me type uh, a bunch of things faster. What advice do you have for students who do not know how to type? To to show kids that don't know how to type to join, so you can type more faster. So whenever you get middle school or college, you you know. Like you could type fast and get your homework done. Um, uh, for I have advice for some kids is where um, if you ever don't know how to type, just keep on practicing and you'll get better at it. Hey, KF Fitness Guest, I'm Evelyn. I am going to be interviewing some kids from Keyboarding 101. Let's get on with the clip. Is it hard to type? Um, after a while, when you start, it's actually really hard, but then after a while, it gets pretty easy. I like the class so far. Well, I think the class is fun because um, when we type, you learn um, new strategies of typing instead of looking down and just using one figure while you type, and it, and it gets way faster. So for me, I feel like you improve more, you improve on your typing. Why is it important to learn how to type? It's important because um, when I think when we go to middle school, we have to, um, they're going to give us big essays, and it's going to take longer if you peck, and it's going to be easier if you know how to type properly. Why is it important to have proper hand position in the keyboard? Because when you are trying to type, if you don't have the right fingerings, then when you try to type, it will be the wrong finger, and then you'll get it wrong. You recently joined the class. Why did you join the class? I wanted to learn how to type fast because I was pecking. It was hard for me to look at the letters. So instead, I asked Marco if I could ask, join the class. And so the first day, I got a lot better now. I hope you like this week's hot topic. Let's go back to the studio. I bet you Kaylee's wondering where I am at. <laughs> <laughs> there they are, Kaylee. Yay! I'm excited. For being out of Hot Topic? Or being in Real Talk? Real Talk! Oh. Hey, Real Talk, do you, want, do you know what Real Talk is? Explain it to them, I know. Real Talk is where we have real conversations about topics we normally don't really talk about. So, let's go see it! Yay! Yay! Hello everyone, I'm Kaylee. I'm going to be covering a topic for KP News called Real Talk, where I'll be asking students questions on subjects that have a direct or an indirect impact on their daily life here at Kerman Floyd. A word of warning, you may or may not agree with some of the answers received in the segment, but I believe it's important that we can all agree to talk about it and have an open discussion. This is Real Talk. February 16, 2017 was not a typical day at Kerm Floyd Elementary and many places around the country. Teachers and staff were shocked and confused by the huge number of students who did not attend school that day. The average classroom looked like a ghost town and few faces and lots of empty chairs. It was a boycott called A Day Without Immigrants that explained for the low attendance. Parents who participated in the boycott, pulled their children out of school to protest against the President of the United States and his plans on immigration. And I'm going to be asking them 10 questions. So first question, were you pulled out of, of the day of the boycott out of school? Yes, I was. 
Were you, Danelli? No, I wasn't. Yes. Yes? Okay. Were you surprised how many students did not attend school on the day of the boycott? Yes, because they told us that there was very little students who attended. Yeah, because there's over 700 kids at the school and only 200, over 260, about 260 kids were here. Um, yes, I know because there's a lot of kids, but I was hoping that there was hardly anybody. So. I, I was surprised because schools are meant to be filled with kids who like to learn that day. I was quite surprised not to see half of my whole class, 33 and only three, 13 attended. Okay. How did you feel when you got pulled out of school? Uh, well, I kind of felt like I guess I was supporting the immigrants, and I kind of felt like I was doing a, a little bit to um, help people understand that immigrants are important in this country. Did your parents explain to you why they took you out of school? Um, they didn't really need to because um, they told me that I wasn't going to school, but... Uh, you could see it in the news and then social media, like people were posting that they weren't going to go to school because they're proud to be an immigrant or they're supporting immigrant families. Not really, because I see it on the news. Yes, they did explain it and they said that the the meaning of the boycott was to prove that nothing is possible without immigrants. Did your family at home talk a lot about the President of the United States and illegal immigration? Yeah, they do. Um, cause they're worried that they're worried that they might have to be sent back. And yeah, mostly every single time they see it in the news, the topic just comes up. Does your family, Danelli? Um, me and my family, we talk a lot. Uh, President Trump. Um, not quite very good things. I can't describe. If you know what boycott means. Um, yes, boycott. For example, is what Martin Luther King did is to stop, like the buses, they stopped using them and the buses lost a lot of money. But how does it make you feel when you see families on TV being torn apart? Um, if I was put in their place, I think I would be really sad to not be with my family. So it makes me feel sad when I see other families torn apart. I agree with Natalie because it would be very sad to be away from my family. <clears throat> oh, it makes me kind of um, upset because I, if I put myself in that place, um, I'd, I'd be like terrified. Then Ellie. Oh, it makes me feel sad because I, I can't imagine living with without my parents and my siblings. Do you have any family or members or friends who are afraid of getting deported by the U.S. government? So, yeah, they're kind of, they pretty much are afraid of the hardships that they might face. Then, Ellie? Me, my, most of my family, yeah, my family members, um, all of, all of my family is quite scared to get deported. Personal question, so. No? Okay. Okay. Do you think the future of America is going to get better or worse? Um, I think that the economic situation might get worse because uh, Mexicans or immigrants are like the field workers, and if there's no field workers, there's no crops or food. I agree with Natalie because it's true, and the immigrants work, and yeah. Um, I guess it could be, it could get a little bit worse because, um, there's going to be like a bunch of people leaving and then jobs might be like unattended and, um, yeah, the, some schools like in the area of California or other places, mm -hmm. they might, the students might not be there anymore and they could end up losing some money. I think it's going to be worse because without immigrants, um, there there's going to be less produce or fruit and vegetables because um, when have you ever seen someone, like, I'm not trying to be racist, but white working in the fields? Well, yeah, non, how do you say that word? 
non-immigrants. Non, non, in, uh, non-immigrants working in the fields. That means less produce, and it's gonna be very bad. Okay. Um, did any of your teachers talk to your class about the boycott after it happened? We did not discuss it the day after. No. Um, our class didn't really go over that, so no, we didn't discuss it. Um, a teacher said that it doesn't really make a difference because it was just a day, so we did discuss about it a little bit. Um, well, not really. My teacher actually kind of didn't say much about it. I, th- I think she just asked um, how much students there were, but she kind of just decided to not go into the topic. And, yeah. You have to be at least 18 years old to vote. When you turn 18, are you going to use the right and privilege to vote to help make a difference? Are you going to, like, vote to make a difference? Um, I, I guess I would once I'm 18, but... I guess it depends on the president. Yeah, well, I would vote. It just depends on the people. Okay. Then, Ali? I would vote because maybe one vote could change America. Yes, because every vote makes a difference. Um, I think I would use my vote to vote for president. Um, I would use it because every vote counts because... Say it was a tie and you vote and it makes a difference. What? The box! It's back. It's back? (laughs) I'm staying with you. It's okay, box. He won't get chosen. I hope not. I put my tickets in here. Just so you know, everybody. Okay, your clip was amazing. Thank you. It was your first clip. We have a mix of all a lot of clips that we did, and we did the best answers. Yeah, the best. With Danelli, Fernanda, Natalie, Samantha, and Beatrice. Good job, guys. Okay, let's go on with the next clip. With with Teacher's Corner with Charlene. Let's go. go. Hey guys, my name is Charlene and I'm doing Teacher Corner with Miss Londo! Thank you very much. <laughs> how was your day, Miss Londo? Just dandy. How was yours? Mine was extra dandy. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Are you ready to start? Mm-hmm. Okay, let's do this. Where did you go to school when you were a kid? I went to several different schools. Um, my family moved around a lot, so... Um, when I was in, in elementary school, I went to two different elementary schools and four different high schools. So I had men, many friends from many different places. <laughs> Do you still have touch with them? Do you still keep in touch? Unfortunately, I haven't been able to keep in touch with some of them. But um, I have more military friends <laughs> than I do, um, you know, school friends. Mm, okay. <laughs> How many years have you been teaching? I've been teaching 10 years now. 10 years? Yeah. Wow. I know. Also, have you taught at another school? And if so, how many years have you taught there as well? Well, I taught at, uh, well, it was called Nova. Now it's called Enterprise. Right mm-hmm. here in Kerman. I taught there for one year, and then I moved to this school, and I've been here ever since. And then you became my ELA teacher. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you go to college for your education to become a teacher? To become a teacher, I went to um, various um, city colleges here in in the valley. So um, I went to um, Madera Center, uh, Fresno City, and also Reedley College. And then I um, finished up at Fresno State. Did you enjoy your college experience? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. I learned lots of things. I was just... I uh, just was like a sponge, wanted to learn more and more, so I definitely enjoyed it. Um, why did you choose teaching as a career? Teaching as a career, kind of a funny story. When I was mm-hmm. in the military, um, I learned very quickly that I was a teacher because we, in order to advance in rank in the military, we had to, um, we had to study 
these NEETS modules to advance. And then we would take a very long test that took about two or three hours to finish. Wow. And when uh, it was coming close to the time to take this test, we would do study groups. And they were always asking me, how do I find the answer for this one? And I would tell them, NEETS module eight. So <laughs> I knew back then that I was a pretty good teacher. Mm, have you had any interest of doing something else before you were a teacher? Yes, right before, um, right after high school, I went to a, um, a recruiter for the military and I told the recruiter, I said, if I cannot f get an electronics job, then I'm not interested in the military. And so they found an electronics technician do job for me, so that was really, really cool. Mm -hmm. What is the what is your favorite part about teaching? My favorite part about teaching is the students. I really enjoy it when I see that look on their face and they go, oh, I got it. I understand. <laughs> That's my favorite part. Yeah. I don't remember if I was like that. <laughs> <laughs> what is the hardest thing about teaching? Um, the hardest thing about teaching, I would think for this year it's been the hardest thing is behavior. Oh, but yeah. another hardest thing for teaching is that teachers have a ton of paperwork and keeping <laughs> up with that paperwork gets very difficult sometimes. Hmm. What do you like to do for fun when you are not at work? For fun, when I'm not at work, I spend time with my fiance and um, I do a lot of reading on the internet. I read tons of articles and different books. Do you have any hobbies? My hobbies, um, I've had several different ho hobbies in my lifetime. Um, I like to sail and um, I enjoy camping and hunting and oh my gosh I've done quite a few but those that's names a few. I remember one day in ELA you showed us some of the skins like some rabbits. Mm -hmm. and like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> do you have a favorite book? Yes I do have a favorite book. It's written by a woman named Jean M. Owl and she wrote um, books like Valley of the Horses, Clan of the Cave Bears. I really enjoy that because she puts archaeology into her books, all the studies that they found of the ancient digging, diggings that they found. So it's been, that's like, really fun. Like the dinosaurs? Yes, like the dinosaurs yeah. and the mammoths. And she puts a story behind it. And it's just oh, cool. really interesting to read. Wow. Okay, you ready for the last question? Mm-hmm. Okay. What is something interesting about you that nobody knows? Uh, there are a lot of things that people know about me because I pretty much tell my story <laughs> in several of the different classes that I've had, but one <laughs> thing that nobody knows about me is when I was a young girl, I had a girlfriend who we used to go uh, riding bikes together, mm -hmm. and we started a, a mystery company where we solved people's mysteries. Anytime they were missing something or they lost something or they needed to solve some sort of mystery, we would get all out old newspapers and read and find clues and um, we would travel around and find different clues. It was the funnest thing ever but it was all made up. It was just a fun time. <laughs> So. <laughs> well, that's it, guys. Teacher Corner with Miss Monzo. Thank you. <laughs> There's a lot of tickets in there. Dang. Well, make sure you do not vote for Marco. Bye bye. So let's get on with the quiz with Kevin. Let's, let's go. go. Hello, Carmen Floyd. I'm Kevin, and I'm here with the quiz. I'm going to be quizzing three teachers and three kids. Let's see how it turns out on the clip. Um, I'm here quizzing Miss Wooten. Um, so the first riddle is, what goes down but never, what goes up but never goes down?
a lot of why I don't know. Um, <laughs> your age. Oh, that's a good one. Okay. Timmy, oh. okay. okay, next one. Timmy's mother has three children. The first one is Jesse. The next one is April. Who is the third child? Can you repeat it? Timmy's mother has three children. The first the first child is Jesse. The second child is April. Who is the third child? Timmy. Correct. Yes. What gets broken without being held? Hmm. Your heart. <laughs> No, promise. Oh, a promise, that's also okay. one. You got one right? I got one right? Do I win a prize for getting one right? Uh, you can eat one of your candies. Oh, yay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> High okay. five, thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'm here with Damien. I'm going to quiz him with some riddles. Okay, first riddle is, what goes up but never goes down? Um, balloon. No, your age. Oh, I get it. Okay, Timmy's mother has three children. The first is Jesse. The next is April. Who is the third child? May. No, Timmy. Because it's Timmy's mother has three children, and I only said Jesse and April. Oh, okay. Okay, what gets broken without being held? It could be something with friends. <sighs> Broken heart. No, a promise. Okay. Oh, I get it. Thank you. You, you got zero right. Thank you. <laughs> Big hands. Okay. I'm here. I'm going to quiz Miss Bondo. So the first riddle is, what goes up but never goes down? What goes up but never goes down is... I don't remember. Um, it's a age. Oh. Okay. Timmy's mother has three children. The first is Jesse. The next is April. Who is the third child? Timmy. Correct. What gets broken without being held? Um... I don't know. I promise. Oh. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you. I'm here with Lorena and I'm gonna quiz her. Okay, first riddle. What goes up but never goes down? A balloon? No, your age. <laughs> Timmy's mother has three children. The first child is Jesse. The next child is April. Who is the third child? Wait. Timmy's May? No, Timmy. Oh. Okay. What gets broken without being held? A bone? Okay, so no. You got Zero right. Congratulations. Yay. High five. I'm so smart. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I'm here with Miss Hernandez, Mrs. Hernandez, fourth grade, and I'm gonna um, quiz her. So the first riddle is, what goes up but never goes down? Um. Let me think. What goes up but never goes down? Is our phone a friend? Huh? Phone a friend? What's that? Can I call a friend oh, to no, for the answer? No, you can't do that. What? Oh, yeah. That's awful. <laughs> Good one. But, yeah. Timmy's mother has three children. The first child is Jesse. The next child is April. Who is the third child? Can you reread that? Timmy's mother has three children. The first child is Jesse. The next child is April. Who is who is the third child? Tammy. Correct. Yes! <laughs> One point me. Okay. What gets broken without being held? What gets broken without being held? Miss Jensen. What gets broken without being held? Without being held? A heart? No, I promise. Oh. 
That's so sad. <laughs> right? Miss Jensen, you want to be in this riddle? <laughs> that's okay. Okay. Um, that's it. Thank you. That's it? Yeah. Wow. That's you're all. welcome. Okay. Thank you. Do you want a handshake or something? I felt handshake. like you needed a handshake. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. All right. Bye. I'm here with Denise, and I'm going to quiz her with some riddles. First riddle is, what goes up but never goes down? Gravity. No, your, a your age. Down. Speak up. Oh. You have to speak up. <laughs> okay. Timmy's mother has three children. The first is Jesse. The next is April. Who is the third child? May. No, Timmy, of course. Oh. Because it's Timmy's mother. What gets broken without being held? I don't know. A promise. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Denise. It's like my 15th blooper. Okay. Um, that quiz was a really good quiz. Turns out the same teachers won again, so next time let's see if kids can win this next time. Um, so yeah, back to you in the studio. That was a good quiz. Uh-huh, really good quiz. The teachers won! Yeah! Miss Rondo, Miss Wilton, and Miss Hernandez, fourth grade. Fourth grade. Fourth grade. So? So anyways, next is bloopers! Why did you decide to join typing class? <laughs> Why First, me? Wait, I mean, do keyboarding. First, do yours. Two, three. Hello, KF Newscast. Today, for Hot Topic, I'm here with... Matthew. And Alexis. And I'm going to be asking you two a couple of questions. The first question is, why did you decide to join typing class? Not typing. Go to video. <laughs> oh, my God. She said typing <laughs> class. We did good at the beginning. She said typing class. Hey, Caffey Newscast, I'm here with Matthew and Alexis. And today I'm going to be asking you two a couple of questions. First question is, why did you sign up for typing class? Oh, my <laughs> God. She said typing class. I'm looking at the room. She said typing. Two, three. Hey, Caffey Newscast, I'm here with Matthew and Alexis. And today I'm going to be asking you two a couple of questions. First question is, why did you sign up for typing class? Oh, my God. She said typing. What? Why are you laughing? You're making me laugh. Two. Hello, KF Newscast. I'm. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? You're the one laughing. You're the one laughing. Okay, take a moment to breathe.